right, story time again. Uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. I've got the air conditioning like blasting. It is 92 degrees out today. According to the thermometer here on the car, it feels a lot hotter. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you can hear me all right with the air conditioning going in the background. But today I'm going to tell you the story of the camouflaged golf cart. All right, so seventh grade, maybe eighth grade, between seventh and eighth grade, maybe. Uh, no, because it was during the school year. <clears throat> um, I believe it was seventh grade. A friend of mine, actually the same friend that I told the the other story about, the friend that went to Jamaica and came back with the goose. Um, that friend had a job at a golf course that was like within a couple miles from our houses. Uh, his job was some sort of maintenance and like lead golf cart attendant. So he had like maintenance keys. He had keys to at least to the golf carts. I can't remember if he had keys to the building or not. Like to the restaurant and bar. But I know that he had keys to unlock the golf carts from where they locked together and charge. Um, so <laughs> you can probably see where this story is going already. Alright, so we plan to go out one night and just go joyriding in the golf carts. Um, there have been several times where um, he would like sneak beers out of the the field house or whatever you call it, the clubhouse, wherever they serve beers. And um, he would like meet me somewhere out of the golf course. Like I'd sneak in, into the golf course through the woods and he'd meet me out there and we'd like drink a beer and, and ride around the golf cart for 20 minutes and head back on our way. He'd go back to work. But on this particular night, we had planned this. We planned it all out. I believe we were like all like camouflaged out. We had all this military stuff. If you watch some of my other videos, I've talked about how we were really into like military tactical stuff and camping out and playing war and stuff. Um, so we're all camoed out. I mean, face paint and everything, right? Got uh, packs on. And, like we sneak onto the golf course middle of the night. It's probably, I mean, we, we do this stuff late, so it's probably like 1 in the morning or something, right? Uh, we go over there, he goes up, unlocks the golf carts, and we're like, we're going to have fun this time. This is no, like, 10, 20-minute joyride. We're going to ride for a couple hours, just drive around until the battery gets low, hook it back up, get another one. So uh, we get out there, and I remember I had my little um, Sony Discman with me, right? And I remember I'm, like, driving around, so we got the golf carts out, and I'm, we each get one. And I'm driving around on mine, and I've got, like, uh, I can't remember what it was, Bush. A Bush album. I don't know why, because I wasn't even that into Bush. But for some reason that day, I had a Bush album, and I was jamming um, Little Things by Bush when the incident happened. Let me, I'll get back to that. So we're driving around. We're having a good time. You know, we stop. We talk. We, we drive around some more. We're just having a blast, man. Some kids driving around the golf course. It's a pretty big golf course. Um, the thing about golf courses is they're not usually, like, well lit, because people don't play golf at night. Um... And the roads are kind of windy, okay? And uh, my friend, he's he's pretty familiar with the terrain. He knows where all the turns and, and, and curves are and stuff like that, where all the hills are and stuff. And um, so we're, tr we're trying to stick to the path because you can go faster when you're not driving on the grass, right? So we're sticking to the, the golf cart path. And um, I don't know how fast the golf cart goes, um, maybe 10 miles an hour. 15 maybe, maybe 15 miles an hour tops, um, but if you get going downhill on a nice steep hill, you can get that baby up to like 30, 35. Well, that's exactly what happened, right? I didn't know the terrain. For some reason, he's like, hey, you can take lead. I'll follow you wherever you want to go. So I'm like, <clears throat> I'm driving. I'm whipping through all these turns. I'm going as fast as it'll go. It's like about 15 miles an hour, right? Pedal to the floor. I come up, like, over this little hill. I didn't know it was, like, a crazy drop-off hill. I get over the hill, immediately panic, because I'm like, dude, like, to me, looking back, even now, like, it was a 90-degree hill, okay? It wasn't a 90-degree hill. It might have been a 45-degree hill, which is actually pretty extreme. Okay. So I'm going down this 90-degree um, hill, and there's, like, turns and curves in it. 
I don't know where they're at. It's pitch black. So I don't know the terrain. Um, he sees me go over the hill at, at full speed, and he's kind of like, oh, shit. And, and obviously, I was thinking the same thing. I go over the hill. Oh, shit. And um, I'm, I'm jamming Bush's little things in my in my uh, my Discman headphones, and I'm flying down this hill, and I'm freaking out, dude, because I don't know where the turns are. All of a sudden, because there's little, little headlights on these, but you don't see much. I start to see that, like, there is a crazy curve, right? There's nothing I can do. I try to stay somewhat to the curve, but I'm like, fuck it. It's not staying on this road. So I just let it go straight, right? I let it kind of go straight. I'm trying to control it, but I can't. I'm in the grass, and I hit. There was some sort of hazard out there, like a um, like a sideways, like a downed tree limb or a log or something. It was intentionally there, though, or like a rock. It was part of the landscape. Anyway, I hit this thing full force gone downhill. I fly out of the golf cart, kind of. I fly out, like, the side of the golf cart. You know, it's like it's open completely on both sides and in the front. It's, it's really easy to fly out of one of these things. I fly out the side, and then something on the golf cart grabs my pant leg, and the golf cart keeps going after I hit this thing. It's still going downhill. It's dragging me. It probably dragged me a good 50 feet, right? I'm like praying to God I don't break anything or, you know, die. I mean, that would be a horrible way to go. Like, my parents find out, like, that's that's how I died. Like, that would be the craziest thing ever. Um, so I didn't want to die, and I didn't want to get horribly injured, because then i get caught, right? Not to mention being in the hospital. But anyway, I it finally comes to a stop. I stand up. Nothing's broken. My leg hurts really bad, though. Like, I'm limping, okay? My buddy Seth, like, I didn't mean to say that. My friend, yeah, I don't think he's going to care at this point, okay? If he cares, he can tell me. I'll take it down. Um, my buddy sees me go over the hill. He's like, oh, my God. And I just disappear into the darkness, right? He has no idea what's happened. Here's a loud crash. And then the next thing he sees is me limping, like limping, right, up over the hill, just limping up. And I'm like, I'm alive. I'm alive, right? I'm completely in shock. Like, adrenaline's going like crazy. I thought I was going to die. And uh, that was the only thing I could think to say is, like, I'm alive. I'm alive. So, yes, I'm alive. But we go back to the golf cart, and it is totaled. As well as you can total a golf cart. Um, the batteries no longer worked. It wouldn't start back up. Also, the front wheels were bent inward. Right? You know, the front wheels are supposed to be straight like this, and when you turn the wheel, they go left and right. This thing, it, it, it was crunched inward, right? The wheels were crunched inward. And the steering wheel didn't make them move anymore. So, like, the axle was broken, and it didn't start up, so you couldn't drive it at all. And um, we're pretty far off from where the golf carts go. You know, originally it was like, we were thinking we could put it back, and just maybe take them a while to notice or something. But no, um... What we ended up doing is there was a there was a a tree line a couple hundred yards ahead of us. I'm like, dude, we gotta hide this thing. And that's our only chance. I mean, he worked there. This dude didn't want to get fired. Um, pretty sure there's there's a statute of limitations on vandalism. So I don't think there's anything really to worry about in terms of getting in trouble. Um, <laughs> anyway, that was our plan. Let's hide this thing, right? So we're pushing it. One of us on one side, one of us on the other. One of us controlling the steering wheel. The steering wheel, it, it, only, it only turned one of the tires, so it worked halfway. We had to keep kicking the other tire back straight in a line to make it go straight every, like, I don't know, a couple steps. So it took us probably an hour to get it beyond the tree line where we could hide it behind this big row of pine trees, right? We get it back there, and we take a step back 100 yards, and we look at it like, you know, is it visible? Is it going to be visible in the daytime? We look at it, and it's like clearly visible, and this is in the middle of the night. So, like, we know this spot's not going to work. we, we got to hide this thing better. What we decided to do, because we were tired of pushing that thing for over an hour, is instead of moving it, we decided to camouflage it. And being um, what we thought were... Um, like badass uh, 
Marine Recon type military, uh, junior military personnel, we thought, like, we can camouflage this thing like a marine sniper, dude, nobody's gonna find it. Okay, so, we, like, we go and we start digging up sod and stuff, and putting it on the seats, because this thing is, like, white as can be, right? This whole golf cart's white. And we're, like, okay, so we're, like, stacking sod on top of it, dirt, throwing dirt all over it, making it really dirty, and then, um, covering it in, like, long grass weeds and cattails and stuff like that, right? Uh, branches from the from the pine tree we get this thing very very well camouflaged not before wiping all of our fingerprints all of it of course because we're smart like that we wiped it down for fingerprints we covered it in camouflage and we hope for the best we went home we got up the next day both of us obviously freaking out you know um he goes to work. I think he had to work the next day, maybe the day after. Well, he comes back and he goes to work, and he's um, he goes in and, and you know I talked to him the next well, later about it. He probably called me when he got home. He's like, dude, we're fucked, man. We are so fucked, dude. The cops are out there investigating, taking fingerprints off the thing. He's like, they saw it immediately, man. They they found it really quick, and, and they like you know they called the cops. They came out. They did an investigation, and it was a scary week or so for some 13 year old kids right we were sure we were going to get busted we didn't get busted he didn't lose his job no one ever found out about it like this is the first probably it's ever been talked about publicly um i saw um an ad in or an ad i saw a uh so i saw an article in the paper uh maybe like a week after the incident it says like golf course vandalized and it tells like the story of how they found it where they found it the investigators had no leads whatsoever couldn't lift any fingerprints off us they could we did do a good job of wiping the fingerprints but uh yeah that was, that was scary that's something i'll never forget um i mean both of us remember that in pretty good detail I and mean, we still talk about it to this day am i proud that i vandalized something and and you know, never had to pay for damages. No, I'm not. But I was also, you know, I was a kid. And kids do dumb things all the time. Much worse things. In fact, I've probably done much worse things. And, um, I don't know, I was 13. I mean, I didn't have a job. I'm going to pay for it. I don't want my parents to pay for it. I didn't have my parents, you know, making up for that. Anyway, that's just, it's another story of dumb kids doing dumb things. Um, but I just wanted to tell it. I wanted to tell that story. And I want to hear your stories. Do you have any any crazy stories like this? You ever accidentally vandalize something? You ever sneak into some place and uh, borrow some equipment and uh, just have fun? I'd love to hear stories like that. So please comment below. Leave me leave me some comments. Tell me tell me your stories, your crazy stories from when you were a kid doing dumb things that dumb kids do. That's all I got for today. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hope you're enjoying these little. Um, life stories from, from my uh, pretty average life. I enjoy them. I hope you enjoy them. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.